Hi friends, it's Miss Nicole here with one of my Friday favorites and can you guys guess what it might be? Any guesses at all? What if I showed you this color, okay? About that color, do you have any idea? Any idea at all? I'll give you a clue, she's a doctor, but she's not a normal doctor. She maybe fixes up toys or stuffed animals? Any guesses now? Well, if you guessed Doc McStuffins, you would be correct. She is one of my all-time favorites. She's so fun. She is a boss. She gets stuff done. She helps people. And she's wonderful. So why wouldn't you love her? So I'm going to actually grab my pretend stethoscope. So what I've done here is I've taken my earbuds with the string because I don't have anything fancy. I'm going to pop them in my ears. There's my little stethoscope. Okay. And then I paper clipped, or I'm sorry, safety pinned a little piece of cardboard so that I could listen to my heartbeat. So you can pretend with your adults. Go ahead and hold this up to them. Ask them to breathe in real deep and out and then move it maybe a little over here in and out just like that okay and then maybe do it a little bit in the middle of their back okay so I'm gonna go ahead and sling my stethoscope over my shoulder there we go and I'm gonna pretend to be a doctor today so if you guys would like to pretend along with me stay tuned and we're gonna read some fun books Okay, so we're actually going to start out with a book called Welcome to the Toy Hospital. And this one's really great for all ages because it takes us through some of the things that we might see in a toy hospital with Jock. Okay, so this is Welcome to the Toy Hospital. So here we have Grandma McStuffins, we have Stuffy, we have Chili, we have Lammy. Doc and her toy friends can't wait to see where the toy sponder will take them. Where do you think it'll take them? This is the town of McStuffinsville. Look how big it is. It's crazy business. This is McStuffins Toy Hospital. And there's our friend Doc. Grandma McStuffins has another present. It's a doctor's coat. The coat for the chief resident of McStuffins Toy Hospital. She knows it's the perfect job for Doc. Doc's toys can't wait to explore the toy town. We could check out the town later, Doc tells the toys. But right now, there are toys to fix here in the toy hospital. Come on. She's got to fix some toys first. All right. So here we have the chief resident's coat. Very cool. And she's giving it to Doc. All right, so here's the reception area. This is where people wait before they go into the doctor's office. So here we have Susie Shun Sunshine, Springo Boingo, we have Awesome Guy, we have Moo Moo, and right there we have the inbox where a little mail goes. We have Professor Hootsberg, a laptop, a telephone, a desk, a gurney to wheel people into the toy hospital. And there's Doc with her awesome little name badge. Alright, so here are some things you might see in the toy hospital. Here we have stuffing. We have bandages, like on this bear's leg. We have some paint, some paint brushes. There you go. We have a tray a cloth, a dish with some water, we have a magnifying glass, and we have thread. Go ahead and look through your house and see if you can find any of those items. Okay, so here's our operating room. Pretty cool, huh? In here we have soap and a scrub sink. We have surgical masks. They look a little bit like the ones that we've all been wearing lately, right? A scrub cap, 
scrubs. That's the outfit that doctors and nurses wear. We have booties, sterile gloves. That means that keeps their hands nice and clean and free of germs. Screwdriver, a light, and an orderly. That's someone to help. How cool is that? And right there we have the hospital gift shop. Have you ever been in a hospital and there's been a little gift shop there where you can buy flowers and gifts for people that are staying maybe? We have books, games, pencils, pens, puzzles, get well cards. We have magazines and newspapers for the patients to read. We have flowers, balloons, a cash register, a person running the cash register. That's called a cashier. And we have some playing cards to play with some people in the hospital, maybe to cheer them up a little bit. Here is Doc's sewing and stuffing room. So there we have Chili, and there's some yarn, thread. This is the exam table. Looks like they're fixing up a stuffed bear. We have some beads, we have some bows, we have some yarn, some thread, some stuffing. And over here we have more of the same. Can you list some of these for me? Go ahead and take a look. Maybe read them out to your adult. These are my favorite. If you can tell me what these are, I would love that. Here's the nursery in the toy hospital. We have a rocking chair, a rattle, a bib, a blanket. We have diapers. We have a pacifier, a laptop, a phone. This is Flickr Firefly with a bottle. We have a changing table right there in the back. You might see those in bathrooms sometimes, right? And we have a mobile. And there's our cradle with our sleeping baby. And right here is the pet vet center where we have a dog, a cat, a turtle. We have squibbles with a ball. We have some treats and toys and a squirrel and a pet carrier and another kitty cat. I love that kitty cat. And it says at the end of the day, it's time for rounds. That's when Doc and the toys go all around the hospital to check on the patients they treated earlier. So here she has a balloon. And there's our doctor, our nurse, and our patient. The patient has a little get well card on her hospital bed, right? There we go. Professor Hootsberg's final lesson is the most important one. Friendship is always the best medicine. So if you can take a look at all of these little things here and list off what they are. What do you think we have there? Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at some of these items and go ahead and tell your adult what they are. All right. So I love that book because it just gives us a little look into Doc's world because in the show we see some of these things, but we don't necessarily get to explore the things in them. All right. In specific rooms, in the hospital, wherever she happens to be in whatever episode we're watching, this kind of gives us a deeper look into what Doc does on the daily. So, with that being said, I think we're actually going to read a story now. It's a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more of a story. So, my favorite dragon, my favorite character in this entire show, is Stuffy. And Stuffy's the dragon. And this story is called A Dragon's Best Friend. And this is based on an episode written by Chris Nee. Ready or not, here I come, Doc calls to her toys. Stuffy is hiding in the perfect spot until something strange crawls up his tail. Oh no. Spider, Stuffy cries, on my tail. Doc looks at Stuffy's tail and laughs. It's not a spider at all. Aw, Doc says. He's a cutie patootie. Bounce, hop, hop. The 
Cutie Patootie rushes up to Stuffy's face and sticks out his tongue. Slurp! Whoever owns him, Stuffy shouts, you can have it back! No! She said. Stuffy leaps right. The toy leaps right. I'm not playing, Stuffy says. You go that way. I'll go this way. I know. I'm a big, brave dragon, Stuffy says. But can you give me a little space? He asked. Stuffy, I don't think he understands you, Doc says. He's a toy pet. Pet? Do you guys have pets? He won't be able to tell us who his owner is, Doc says. So you guys ask the toys, and I'll go ask the kids, she said. Doc and her toys search the park. I can't find anyone who knows who he belongs to, Doc says. The toys in the park says he's been out here alone for days, Lammy asks. Or Lammy adds. Stuffy hears Doc's dad calling and hops into the Doc mobile. We can't just leave this little guy out here all alone. But he's so annoying, Stuffy cries. I always have room for another toy, Doc tells him. Back at Doc's clinic, Hallie meets the new toy. Sweet nibbles! I could just eat them up, the hippo gushes. Sweet nibbles, sweet nibbles. Squibbles! That's what we'll call him. But all of a sudden, Squibbles looks scared. He hops and bops behind Stuffy's leg, trying to hide. Is he okay? Stuffy wonders. Not that I care or anything, said Stuffy. I think so, Doc says, but to be sure, we should do a checkup. Luckily, Doc isn't just the best toy doctor in all the world. She's a vet for toy pets, too. Doc tries to lead Squibbles to the vet clinic, but Squibbles isn't going anywhere. I know who he'll follow, Doc says. Who? Stuffy wonders. Oh, right. Me. Here, boy, Stuffy calls to Squibbles. And Squibbles jumps into Stuffy's brave dragon arms. He's a toy pet, so he doesn't understand that a checkup is good for him, Doc tells Stuffy. That's why I need you to hold him still. So Doc gives Squibbles a checkup. The toy pet has a strong heartbeat and is the perfect height and weight. Now that we know Squibbles is in good shape, we can try to find his owner. That's good. He's nice and healthy, right? Lammy gets the paper. Chili gets the markers. The toys make posters for Doc to hang in the park. I need someone to look after Squibbles while I'm gone, Doc says. I can, if you really need me to, Stuffy says. Thanks, Stuffy, Doc says. I know that will make him happy. Stuffy takes Squibbles outside. Want to play a catch? He asks. Yep, yep, Squibbles barks. After Squibbles makes a daring midair catch, he lands on a high tree branch and <gasps> the branch breaks. Squibbles tumbles down towards Stuffy. Ouch! His antenna is bent. Oh no, I'm sorry I threw the ball so high, Squibbles, Stuffy says. Oh no, he feels bad. You may go ahead and give yourself some Squibble antenna. Good job. It's a pet vet emergency. Doc McStuffins arrives just in time to save the day. Squibbles was fine at his checkup earlier, Doc says. The only difference now is his antenna. He has a case of an antenna crush syndrome. That's sad. Don't worry, little buddy, Stuffy says. You're going to be okay. I promise. So Stuffy cuddles Squibbles tightly. Doc bends his antenna back into place, and Stuffy is very happy. Doc hears her mom calling. A boy saw one of Doc's posters in the park. He's coming to pick up his lost toy. Yay, good job. Oh, wow, Stuffy says when he hears the news. That's just swell, he sniffs. Be careful out there. Try not to get lost again or break your antenna. Well, bye, Squibbles, said Stuffy. I think Stuffy's a little sad to say goodbye to his friend. A few minutes later, Doc comes back to the clinic with a surprise. 
Her stethoscope shimmers and she pulls Squibbles from behind her back. Squibbles was not the boy's lost toy after all. Woohoo! Stuffy shouts. I was thinking, Doc, Squibbles doesn't have a home, so maybe can we adopt him? Okay, Doc says. But remember, having a pet is a lot of work. Squibbles, we'd, we'd love you to stay, Stuffy Stammers. If you'll have me, I'll have you. Hup, hup, press. Slurp. He gave Stuffy a kiss. That's my boy, Stuffy laughs. Welcome to the family. Doc and the toys all shouted. Stuffy didn't even know he wanted a toy pet, but now he couldn't imagine life without a dragon's best friend. I think that story's so fun. I, I just love the characters. All right. So, do you guys all know the Stretch and Flex song? That's a pretty fun song from Doc. Now, I can't play it because we'll get in trouble here and the video will get taken down, but I can't ask you guys to play the Stretch and Flex song at home. Just go onto YouTube, look it up, okay? And then I want you guys to stretch and flex, okay? And then go ahead and stretch and flex your fingers and stretch and flex your toes and stretch and flex your legs and your arms, okay? and have a little bit of fun while you're doing it, okay? All right, so we've read two stories, and I think we're just gonna read one more, okay? This one's called Rundown Race Car. And this book's a little beat up because it's well-loved, but I hope you guys can still enjoy it with me. Rundown Race Car by Sheely Sweet Sheila Sweeney Higginson. Doc and Donnie are getting ready to race. Donnie puts Ricardo race car at the starting line, and Doc picks up a yellow race car and puts it next to Ricardo. After Ricardo beats your car, he's going to be ready for the championship best race car ever race, Donnie says. Let's get this race going, Doc says to her brother with a smile. The racers start their engines and their Ricardo takes the lead. Donnie and Doc watch as the cars zoom around the track. Only one more lap to go before Ricardo wins the race, Donnie cheers. There we go. But wait, on the last lap, Ricardo begins to slow down, and Doc's yellow race car zips past him and crosses the finish line first. You won, Donnie yells. That's not possible. Oh, he's so sad. Donnie's eyes fill with tears. He throws the remote control to the floor. I'm sorry, Donnie, said Doc. She felt bad that he felt bad. Dad comes in to see what's wrong. Donnie, I think you need a nap, Dad says. But I'm not tired, said Donnie. Then he yawns. <sighs> Stretch. Why don't I see if I can fix Ricardo, Doc asks. Good idea, Doc, says Dad. Dad steers Donnie to his bedroom. If you get some sleep now, it'll recharge your batteries. I'll fix Ricardo before your friend Luca gets here for the big race, Doc says. That's very nice of her. I think so. Doc carries Ricardo to her clinic while Donnie naps. Her stethoscope begins to glow, then magically all the toys come to life. Stuffy sees what Doc has in her hand. Ricardo race car, says Stuffy. I'm his number one fan. Ricardo wonders why he is being carried. He's the greatest race car there is. Surely he can race his way across the backyard. You haven't been going as fast as usual, Doc says. I'm worried something might be wrong. Ricardo doesn't know what Doc is saying. He is faster than any car race car around. But when Doc puts him on the ground, he sputters and stops. But I have a big race today, Ricardo moans. 
Donnie's counting on me. It's time for Doc to give Ricardo a checkup. She lifts his hood and looks at his engine. Everything looks okay. Can you give me a big vroom vroom? Doc asks. So Ricardo tries, but his vroom doesn't have a lot of power. Hallie thinks Ricardo looks worn out. You raced a bajillion times last night, right? Yes, this is true, says Ricardo. A bajillion times exactly. Doc knows what is wrong. My diagnosis is no vroom vroom atosis, she tells Ricardo. Ricardo needs to recharge his battery. That's it. That's all it takes. Doc asks Dad to plug Ricardo into the charger, and before long, his light turned green. By the time Donnie's nap is over, Ricardo will be all revved up and ready to go. So later on, Donnie's friend Luca comes over. Donnie puts Ricardo at the starting line. Luca picks up his car and puts it next to Ricardo, and the racers start their engines and they're off. On the last lap, Ricardo begins to speed up. Go, Ricardo, go, Doc cheers. He zips past Luca's car and crosses the finish line. Ricardo wins! Thanks, Doc, says Donnie. You're the best big sister in the whole wide world. I love that story. I thought that was super fun. So I hope you guys really enjoyed our stories for today. And I hope you guys have fun pretending to be your own docs, just like Doc McStuffins. And maybe fix up some of your toys. All right. And we will see you guys next time. Have a great day.